Okay, hello and welcome back to the Road to Avengers Endgame, and we are back in Wales, and uh, this is the first one that we watched when we came back, it is Captain America, the Winter Soldier. So, we've already watched this, we're not going to do an intro and all that kind of stuff, we'll just do the whole talk now. So, Winter Soldier uh, came out in 2014, and we saw it in the cinema in New York. Which is which is kind of a nice novelty, and I always remember that was we'd gone to see the Grand Budapest Hotel in Rochester with Robbie, and then we went to New York, and it was like you know New York fairly kind of it was, the, it was the Upper West Side we were at. Something yeah, the like last that. the our last trip to New York was Upper West Side. R regardless, it was an AMC theater, and I was expecting it to be fairly pricey, and it was around the same price as it was in Rochester. It was like fifteen quid, wasn't it? Uh, Something like that, but. Like Norwegian price, and I was like, Jesus. Sure, but it was the same price as the Rochester cinema, which was just a normal cinema, just you know, nothing fancy about it. And then this one, this AMC cinema, was like the most luxurious cinema experience of my entire life. We had like a reclining sofa chair each. Yeah. There was about, in my head, I'm thinking it's like ten feet of like leg space. There's probably like four or five foot of leg room like there's just the, the 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 rows were so like wide and you know everyone was horizontal in that cinema yeah. and i was just like this is ridiculous i mean it's great but it's like i'm, I'm you kind don't of, go there for a marathon you <clears throat> sleep through it. i'm fighting the urge to kind of just nod off here because it's so comfortable and the crowd was really cool and i remember specifically when halfway through the film spoilers uh, the winter soldier his mask comes off and it's bucky from the first Captain America film, I just remember people going, "Oh shit!" Like people were reacting like it was this big surprise, and I was not, like, "Not Bucky from Harry Potter." Bu oh, that's Buck Beat. Buck Beak, yeah, Beak. yeah, Buck Beat. <laughs> 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 no, uh, yeah. So um, Bucky. I'll always remember that the the big reaction to the Winter Soldier at reveal. Anyway, so that was our little story about seeing it. But over the years, it's been held in high regard as the best Marvel movie. You know, people look at it as like the Dark Knight of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I would agree that this is probably like the best kind of written film. Like, it's so solid, so tightly, you know, constructed. The dialogue is great. Every character really has like a, a really well written and well planned out kind of. Uh, uh, opinion on everything that's going on as S.H.I.E.L.D. seems to be disintegrating in front of their very eyes. Nick Fury is kind of, you know, an attempt is made on his life. All these things happen. It's like an espionage spy thriller from the 70s. And it just feels like a much better film than a superhero film has any right to be. So I would agree with that. But it's not my favorite. And I, I don't think it's quite the best. Because for me, a superhero movie is more of a kind of exciting action movie, but I love that they did something different with this. Yeah, it felt more, it felt more like a thriller. It felt more like a, a, a genuine, legit kind of, you know, thriller that you would, you know, see just it. happened to have Captain America. They just happened to have Captain America in it. I mean, there's nothing too outlandish. I suppose the heli carriers at the end are kind of, you know, science fiction, I suppose. So there's And, and also the guy who's reconstructed all the, all the data tapes from uh, the first movie. Yeah. I forget his name, but he's like, he's put all of his brain into like, you know, these old... 1960s, 70s data tapes, but okay. So there are outlandish elements in the film, but it does have a a grittier feeling than a lot of the other ones. I think Robert Redford is a real highlight. You know, he's just a great actor, and so him playing the the higher up in Shield and kind of the ambiguity over his character was great. Samuel L. Jackson, I think this is the first time he really gets a major part to play. Like his his character of Nick Fury is really a big part of this film. I love the scene. When he's he gets... in the Avengers a lot. But he, oh, true. It's yeah, not yeah. About him. It's not about him. This one. Yeah, this one. This he, one is more about him than Captain a, America almost, because it's about Shield. It's about Shield and the, the Hydra, and it's a really bold move as well because they really establish Shield over all the movies, and then now they just throw it completely under the bus and say, nope, it's actually this. Uh, you know, Hydra has been operating it from the beginning. It's this huge conspiracy, and now Shield is gone. And but it's a, a, but that's a really nice thing to do before the next Avengers movie because it just throws everything into a frenzy and I like that and the scene when Nick Fury gets cornered on the streets in his car is incredible mm. that scene is so well put together it's so exciting so tense and you really it reminded me of the scene in Breaking Bad when Hank gets cornered by the twins 
Like it's just this gripping scene. He's kind of stuck in his car. You know, you you've genuinely worried for it because he's a character, Nick Fury, who at that point. I wouldn't have been surprised if they killed him off, you know? Mm -hmm. And they really make it seem like they're going in that direction, but, like, he gets shot, and then he's, like, sticking himself in the arm, and he's, like, he keeps going, and he keeps, you know, it looks like he's about to get killed by the Winter Soldier. He escapes, and then, yeah, just so well done. Um, and Captain America. I, I just, I really like the character, and it's, I know, it's, it's tricky, because he's quite a bland character in the sense that he is just this optimistic, always does the right thing, you know, it's it, it's difficult. I think it must be difficult to to really make a good movie around that, without showing some complexity to him. But I guess in this film, he just really doesn't know where he stands because, in the Avengers, he's in the present day, he's thrown into everything, and he just it's this big fight. In this one, he's now having to deal with day to day life, in the future, or in the in, in the present. To him, it's the future. He's kind of missed seventy odd years, so he's trying to kind of find his place, and he doesn't know you know, whose side he wants to take or anything like that, whether he agrees with S.H.I.E.L.D. all that much, um, but he's working with them, and so there's a, there's a complexity to him there, I suppose. So what do you think of the film, Winter Soldier? You feel like you covered all of it. <laughs> I, love, I love the relationship between him and Black Widow. That's fun. Yeah. It's, uh, it makes uh, the film more interesting. I think in, um, in The Age of Ultron, it's kind of like mentioned how she's a little bit flirty with other guys when she's like... Doing stuff with the Hulk. Yeah. I think it's like mentioned. And obviously she has uh, Captain America kiss her at some point. But that's just to hide. Yeah. The authorities. The fake authorities. Mm. Uh, I think the fight scenes in this one. Really good. Are good. They, they, they're not as messy as uh, a lot of action movies but are it, now. It still has a lot of quick cuts. But the choreography seems really well done. Yeah. And so it flows better, a lot better. Well, yeah. It's better put together. I like the, the elevator fight scene. So it's good. very intimate. It's very like... It starts out funny in a way as well, like how I was like, okay, so before we start, anyone want to get out? That's a that's a it's fucking a badass. That's a badass moment. I love that moment. Let's just. Um, he he knows what he's capable of. Yeah, he, yeah. He knows like he can he can get out of this, and um, I, I I never really cared about the Bucky character that much, even now. Um, but I kind of like the relationship that's coming out. Yeah. Between them in this one, um, well, that, that I guess that gives him a lot more to to dig into as a character because it's the he wants to save his friend, you know, he doesn't want to just kill him and get him out of the way, so he has to kind of literally save the world. The millions of people's yeah. lives are at stake, but he also wants to save his best friend, and that kind of you know that throws a spanner in the works. Mm. But I also like the Falcon character coming through in this movie. Like, that's where we get to know Falcon. Yeah, he's really ni uh, nicely put into it. It's not like... It's from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this little play with the words on your left as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. In the end, which I was like, haha. You know, that's really well put together, I think. Well written. Yeah, it's um, just a really well written film it's overall. It's an enjoyable movie. It's uh, maybe too political. Like, well, you didn't say political, did you? But that's basically what you well, meant. Well, it is, yeah. And uh, I I, um, I see that, but at the same time, I guess it was necessary because of this whole S.H.I.E.L.D. thing. We get to know that Bucky is going to be a big part of it, and we get to put Falcon into the... Yeah. Oh, and uh, doesn't Black Widow kind of stick around with Captain America later on? So that shows, like, why that alliance is being made after yeah. Civil War. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. You understand like why they're close and stuff now. So yeah, it's a necessary movie, not the best, but I really do like it. Yeah, it's one that I don't like. Oh, I want to watch that again. I know that people love it, and I understand why. A really random point. I think it's the best film that uses his shield, like the way he uses it to to get into places, to fight people, to take down a ship. Like he just really uses that shield in lots of different ways. It's his third arm in a way. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Like they they really utilize that a lot in the film. Uh, not to the point where it's overkill, but it just really makes sense and uh, is really cool. It really is a frisbee, eh? <laughs> it's impossible to control it the way he does, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you don't think about that... <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, trying to think. There's something else that I wanted to mention about the film, Winter Soldier. Yeah, I, I like the Winter Soldier character, and it's a nice twist, and I really like how he plays out throughout the rest of the movies. It's a really nicely done thing where they don't turn him all the way in this film. I think it'd be so easy to have, 
you know, Captain America kind of go, look, Bucky, you know, we used to be friends, and, like, he makes him remember, and then he turns good at the end. No, they don't do that. They, you know, he, he saves Captain at the end, but in a way where he just leaves him. You know, he's not, he's still confused. I think, uh, what's his name, Sebastian Shaw, does a really great job of showing the confusion he's going through. I kind of feel like he's he's a dog who who got lost and he went wild, but there's yeah. a part of him who still kind of knows that Captain America is like his family. Yeah, yeah. So he saves him, but he doesn't want anything to do with him. So he's uh, just gonna yeah, and, and go the, off on his own. Yeah, and and then <laughs> we, we see him in the mid credit scene or the end credit scene where he goes into the museum to kind of learn more about himself and his past, which kind of hints to that he'll maybe come out of it a little bit more. But they have one more scene of him and Steve Rogers back in the 40s when Steve was still a little scrawny, you know, little kid. Well, not a kid, but he looks like a kid. And I think they did a better job with him in that one. He doesn't have, like, the weird chin, you know. He still so, had a small chin. Yeah, it, it still wasn't perfect, but it was it was better than it was in the other, other movie, I think. And this was the beginning of the two directors, the Russo brothers, making Marvel movies. I think they did this one, Civil War. And then the two recent Avengers movies, so they're kind of. I think they've probably made more, directed more Marvel films than anyone now. So they've they really kicked it off with a great movie, I think. And you know, like you say, it's not one that is my favorite. I can see why it's the favorite of many other people, and I do think it is one of the best, just in terms of everything that. You know, there's no bad scene. All the characters seem to have everything well laid out for them. It's well written, well put together, and it has a big, exciting, you know set piece at the end and leads into the not the next one but into the next Avengers movie with the reveal of the twins uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch who we'll see in Avengers Age of Ultron but yeah so that's it for the Winter Soldier I think um, uh, I think the next one is Guardians of the Galaxy so anything else you want to add about the Winter Soldier? Nah. No. Nope didn't think so okay so there we go thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one